Hello, future Seawolves, and welcome to the Stony Brook live chat, where we're going to answer your questions about anything regarding to the university. I'm Greg Canella. Hi, I'm Hannah Smees. I'm a senior double major in journalism and Spanish. Um, I am the editor-in-chief of the campus newspaper, The Statesman, and I'm a member of the School of Journalism Advisory Board. And I am also a senior journalism major. I am the news director for WUSB, our campus radio station, and also an advisory board member. So send your questions in. We're ready to answer them and anything you want to know. We know everything. I am also a commuter student, so I live about 15 minutes away. So coming to Stony Brook was number one for me. Yeah, I'm actually out of state. Um, I'm from Princeton, New Jersey, so I live on campus. I have been in just about every dorm uh, that we do have, so let us know. Why we chose Stony Brook. OK, so I, like I said, am out of state. Um, I well, knew I wanted to do journalism for a really long time, so I found the Stony Brook School of Journalism program. I came here with my mom to admit to Students Day, and the School of Journalism had a program, and they showed us this video of these alumni talking about their experiences. And long story short, the girl on the camera started crying, and I almost started crying, and I knew that I wanted to be here. Um, and I knew I wanted to have the same experience she had, so after Admitted Students Day, like I was sold. They walked us into the newsroom, um, and I knew I just I had to be here. You know, it's so funny because I didn't know I wanted to do journalism. I actually started out as a bio major, and Hi. through going through a couple classes, I finally found my niche in journalism, and coming to Stony Brook was just natural for me because I lived so close, and I had relatives come here also, and it just seemed like the perfect fit for me. Oh, good. I didn't actually know anyone when I got here. When I did get here, I found out I had two family friends here who I didn't really know before, but I got to know them. Um, and really get to know the Long Island, greater New York area. So yeah. it was fun. What makes SBU journalism so great? I have to say the real life experience we get out of this program. You know, we're getting out there reporting and doing different things that we want to do that we will end up doing for a future job. So I think this program really, really gets down to the nitty gritty and, and it helps you and the classes are small and you meet people that are interested in the same things as you. I think what also makes it so special is that it is so new. We are coming up on our 10th year anniversary. Uh, in 2016, we opened in about 2006. So with being so new, our school is always evolving and always adjusting to the evolution of the industry of the journalism industry. So we have professors who have been out there, who have been to all sorts of places. One of our professors um, has worked for CBS Moscow. One of our professors was a producer at 60 Minutes. Our founding dean, Howard Schneider, is, was the editor-in-chief of Newsday for a few decades. So everybody is very accomplished in their own fields and also very willing to adjust to how the industry works, um, which is really hard to find at a lot of other journalism schools that have been around and established for like 100 years. And our program just got accredited too. Yeah, we are an huge. accredited program, which is a huge deal for a school that's only 10 years old, not even. Yeah. So that's really exciting. Um, and just how hands-on and small it is. Mm -hmm. um, there's only about 240 majors, which at a state school like Stony Brook is like not that big. So it's exciting. We're to come to Stony Brook now to the School of Journalism now is a really exciting time because we're still growing. And we have our own newsroom. Stony Brook University has our own newsroom, and we have our own studio for broadcast kids, and just to really get that hands-on experience. What media do we have? So we are, oh, well, oh okay, <laughs> yeah, so we have, we have three campus news publications, sorry. So I am biased because I'm the editor-in-chief of the Statesman. I've been there all four years, so any questions you have about that, feel free to ask. Um, we well, have I'm a staff writer for the Story for Independent, so if you have any questions about that, I can help you out. Yeah, so the, the, the Statesman is a traditional once-a-week daily, a weekly newspaper, once-a-week. Um, and we do publish online every day. The Stony Brook Press is alternative news in their month, monthly, monthly magazine. Um, and the Stony Brook Independent is all online. Um, and they have their own website. And then Greg can talk about the radio station. The radio station, it is a huge station. We broadcast mainly throughout the whole island, 90.1 FM, even some parts of Connecticut. And you can stream it online as well at the website. But at the radio station, we have a specific part for news, and um, that's just one outlet as a broadcast 
place for students to deliver the news. And then there's also other shows such as, you know, what kind of you could play any kind of music. It's a non-commercial, it's a free form radio. So, you know, it's really, really hands on and, and students can go there if they like music, news, just talk show or talk about something. It's really, really wide range. Yeah, the Journals and Schools broadcast program also offers a lot of opportunities. Not only do you get to work on a weekly news show, you know, when you do get into your upper division classes, but we also produce a few live shows during the year. So we broadcast live from big campus events. So we just wrapped homecoming about a month ago. They did a huge mm -hmm. Wolfstock live program. Um, in the spring, we do Roth Regatta live. So we're right by the pond um, and we track the boat races. And then actually it's also another exciting program that we have coming is that the journalism school is partnering, partnering with an NPR affiliate uh, right across the street from the train station here. So students will have an opportunity to intern and hold part-time positions uh, at the NPR affiliate, which is so exciting because NPR is a huge name in journalism. So how much work do we have? Is it hard? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes and no. Yeah. We're not we're journalists, we're not gonna lie to you. It's hard. Mm, it's it's, it's hard. not a program for the faint hearted. Yeah. Um, but when you come out of it, you are so, so prepared Definitely. for the real world. Um, and we can't tell you how many times people have told us, you know, like when we go and visit real newsrooms or professional newsrooms, mm -hmm. they always tell us that like your schoolwork is a lot harder than it really is in the real world. Um, but the journalism major is about 49 credits. Yeah, um, 49 credits. And I mean, you start out writing and then you get into broadcast and then you pick which one you want to do. So there's really something for everyone. There's web people like online writing. So yeah. And it's fun too. Like for what really makes it different for us is that like if I were a bio major, I would sit there and study, and then whatever I wanted to do afterwards, like if I went right. to grad school, that would test if I actually learned anything. When you come into the journalism program, you have clips and you have stories and you have videos and you have photos to show that you know what you're doing and you, you can show that to employers, uh, which is really exciting. And also like just covering Stony Brook is so interesting because we are such yeah. a young university too. We only opened in 1957. Um, so things are always changing and we're always kind of recording history here. Plus we have the campus that's in Southampton and we have the Manhattan campus. So there's news throughout the whole island that yeah. you can cover. And with the journalism program, it is a lot of outside work. So you're really just getting out there. You've got cameras, tripods, interviews, you know, it's, it's really hands-on and really teaches you for the, and prepares you for the real world. Yeah, as you learn what you're doing, it gets easier, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say probably the hardest part is not hitting someone with a tripod when you're walking <laughs> around campus or when you're on the bus, but yeah. you know, it, happens. it happens. They don't understand, it's fine. Yeah. Just say sorry, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as internships, I know for me, over the, this past summer, I interned at News 12 Long Island, which is our local news station here, for those of you who don't know. and. Um, it's mo mainly focused in television news. So that hands-on experience there, I mean, prepared me so much. This program has prepared me so much just for that. And um, it's something to put on my resume. And I've got so much out of it and met so many connections through it, too. Yeah, I've actually had two internships while I've been um, at the journalism school. And the journalism school actually ha really helped me get those. So the first one I did was at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York City. So I was commuting to the city uh, twice a week. So, you know, it was a hard semester because I was always running around, I was busy, but it was a lot of fun. And actually, my supervisor who I was working for was a friend of mine who I had met at the Statesman two years before and he graduated. So that helped. Um, and it was really nice to go into a professional environment for the first time and have somebody who knew me and who I knew and who, I could, who could really help me grow. Um, and then my second internship, I worked at the newspaper in Green Bay, Wisconsin, um, at the Green Bay Press Gazette, which is a Gannett paper owned by, you know, one of the largest publishing companies. Um, in the country, so they publish USA Today. And that was a lot of fun because I was uh, living in the home of the Packers for three months. So, you know, these are people who their lives revolve around this football team. And it's really exciting because when I never really got into football and now I'm just a Packers fan because <laughs> you really can't not be when you're there. Um, unfortunately, I was there during the off season, but it was a lot of fun. I was in some place that I had never been before. I was around people who didn't look like me, you know, who had never really been around somebody who yeah. looks like me. Um, and, you know, even yeah. for internships, though, who, for people who aren't journalism majors, you know, oh, I've yeah. known people in the bio department or chemistry who do a lot of research. 
And with the Stony Brook Hospital right here, that's one of the number one benefits of this school is that you're right there and all the experience is across the street. Yeah, and you can also get so many internship opportunities on campus through the Career Center. Um, Mariana Savoca, who works at the Career Center, is so, so helpful. Um, and it's, it's, really, it's really nice because you can do it on campus or off campus. Um, I know for me, now that I work the Statesman, I offer lots of internships to students from a lot of other departments. So people who are interested in digital media, you know, we want to get people who want to do our archiving, um, people who are interested in business, want them work in our business office. Um, so there's really lots of options for everybody. What kind of jobs have people gotten? Okay. Uh, right. In terms of journalism, we have a little family at CBS. Mm -hmm. um, we have people who work in all parts of CBS, CBS News. Yeah. Uh, we do have a couple of professors as well who have come from CBS. Um, we had somebody at ESPN. We have... There was News 12, yeah. a reporter for News 12. Um, Definitely Newsday as well because that's yeah. right here. Um, we have people who also work at the Times Beacon Record newspapers, which mm -hmm. are more local to the North Shore of Long Island. Uh, we have an alum, like I said before, at the Council on Foreign Relations in the city. And then we have people in D.C. We have people, yeah. like, really all over the world. Life on campus. Life on campus is fun, you yeah. know? Stony Brook is uh, the kind of school where it's not so big that it's overwhelming and it's not so small that, that it's suffocating. Right. So there's always events going on on campus. I think one of the... I think a lot of people have always thought that Stony Brook is a commuter school, which it's not because we have one of the highest uh, mm -hmm. resident retention rates like in the SUNY system. So, you know, there's always programs going on. It's really exciting because a lot of the student groups make an effort to hold events on the weekends so that for students who are here on the weekends to keep them busy, keep them involved. Um, so there's always, like in the fall, it's really nice because we have like little farmer's markets in the academic mall. Um, we do Strawberry Fest in the spring. So there's a lot, there's a lot to do. As far as commuter wise for life on campus, you know, the commuter association really helps put together these little things to keep bringing people together because as a commuter, it could be hard meeting people. But I would say, you know, they have movies, drive-in movies, um, relaxathons where they're bringing people to massage you and photo booths and just to have fun and be carefree during these stressful times like final weeks or midterms. So, you know, they really host these events to also benefit you academic-wise, so you don't get caught up with the stress and the books, yeah. because we've all been there before. So this one time, my friend is an RA, and she hosted a program during finals week where she had this animal shelter bring puppies to her. To de-stress yeah. people? Yeah. yeah so I, I went to that. Yeah. So you sit, yeah. like, in the grass yeah. and you play with these dogs, and it is so gratifying. Yeah. <laughs> so there's lots of things. Storybird does take care of you. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. I wouldn't worry about that. We're just waiting on some We're just questions. Waiting questions. <laughs> sports. Okay. I love Stony Brook sports. Um, She's a big basketball fan. Yeah. So I, well, I can't say I'm a big basketball fan. I'm a big Stony Brook basketball fan. Stony Brook basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, so I came to Stony Brook as a, a really big soccer fan. I have been for a long time. Um, so one of the, so all of our sports are division one, all 18 teams. Um, our football team is, is in the CAA conference, and then the rest of our sports are in the American East conference. Um, so it's a very, very high level competitive play. Um, and so in the fall, it's really fun for me to go to the soccer games. Um, I went all last season in my junior year as a photographer, so being able to be on the turf was like a really exciting um, experience, and it's just, you know, like best seat in the house. So football. Soccer, football, mm -hmm. hockey. Yeah, so our hockey team actually, which I will always talk about, our <laughs> hockey team is actually not an athletic team. They are a club team, but they are number three in the country, and they started their season mm -hmm. as number one. So actually, if you have a car or if you have friends that have cars, that's a really, really fun thing to do. The rinks in Hop Hog is about like 15 minutes from campus. Yeah. Um, they play two games on the weekend, so one Saturday night, usually another one, uh, like Sunday afternoon. Um, and, th and that is just so much fun because they're like smashing up against the glass and like, like a real hockey game. It no, is a real it hockey is. game. It's a real hockey game. But it's a lot of fun. So sports, there's like no shortage of Stony Brook spirit. Definitely not. But even with sports comes those great Stony Brook events. Yeah. There's Wolfstock Live, which is just for the journalism program, you put on a show for it, but you're interacting with the community at Stony Brook. We get players, we get mm -hmm. people that have the alumni, alumni, everyone that comes in. 
there's the Wolfstock Village, yes. and then the actual games, and then this isn't kind of a Stony Brook sport, but Roth Regatta, that's oh, yeah. its own sport kind of tradition here at Stony Brook where campus residents or just or clubs, anybody, really. really anybody, can make their own boats out of duct tape, duct tape and cardboard only. And you uh, would race in the Roth Pond. So, I mean, that's it's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. You have all students gathered around the pond, just rooting for each other, and the boats. Yeah, are, it like, sounds amazing. fancy because it's yeah. called a regatta. It's not. It's <laughs> it's great. You know, you see all these people yeah. just like, and every year we have a different theme. So last year was fantasy, I think, or mainstream, mainstream fantasy. fantasy. So there's Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. Harry I had a, Potter. Yeah, for sure. I had a friend who mm -hmm. he dressed up as Khaleesi from Game of Thrones. <laughs> It was very strange, but it's like it's one of those things that's just like quintessentially Stony Brook. You know, like Monsters Inc. Yeah. I saw, yeah. and they got creative. I mean, they paint everything. Yeah, and they and do. They judge it. You yeah, know, like that's one of those things. Like if you're not really an athlete, that's where you get to show off. <laughs> they had the swim team one time do it, and I think they were disqualified actually because they were like, uh, they actually swim. They They're actually, actually athletes. <laughs> we can't have them do that. But it's always it's always a good time. How do J School faculty keep up with the changing world of journalism? Okay, well, the journalism world is always changing with, of course, new technology, and social media is such a big factor nowadays with journalism. Um, we've definitely adapted to creating new classes. Mm -hmm. You know, what's new this semester was a social media class, how to handle breaking news, because that is so important in today's technology and with social media. Breaking news, you want to, you want to get out the information, but it wants to be accurate, and you want to know how to do this and that. So. As the journalism world adapt changes, we adapt to it, and I think our professors are pretty good at it. Yeah, and the other thing is too, the faculty will always ask us like what we want to learn. So just today, uh, we had a meeting with the dean of the journalism school, Howie Schneider. He and he gave us a survey at the end, and he asked us like, what else do we want to see? What do we want to learn? Um, so you know that gives the journalism school like good feedback on like what they can incorporate into their curriculum, and also too like the faculty is always changing. Um, we, two years back, we hired our first alum as a faculty member. His name is T.C. McCarthy. He graduated from here in, I believe, 2010. And he teaches the web design and coding class, the upper division web design and coding class. We hired our second alum as a, as a staff professor uh, to teach the social media class that right. he is in right now. So, you know, it's really, it's really nice, actually, to have people who have been here, who have gone through the program with, not with us, but they get would, it. Yeah, they, they went through they it as it. students. They get it. Yeah. And so. they, they see what they would have wanted to learn, and they incorporate that into their curriculum, which I think is really special. Mm -hmm. And they're always looking for feedback from students. You know, as members of the advisory board, we hear from students, and then we go to the faculty, and the faculty, want, it, it's back and forth. So they really yeah. care about their students and how, you know, their, how, what they want to learn, pretty much. What is there to do off campus? Off campus. So as a, commu as a yeah. commuter, I mean, I know it's going around. There's a Smith Haven Mall, which is you know a great place to hang out. Everyone loves the mall. It'll get the job done. You know there, <laughs> <laughs> there's the mall. There's Port Jefferson, which is just maybe five minutes away, five no. to ten minutes. It takes five minutes to get off campus with the traffic. Oh, that's the traffic though. It's without like ten minutes. Without it's traffic. Like, it's like ten fifteen <laughs> minutes, but uh, no. But going down to Port Jefferson, seeing the harbor, the boats. There's you know there's definitely places to go for all type of people too. Yeah. Um. What else is around? The Port Jefferson Ferry is there, Ferry. so if you live in Connecticut or mm -hmm. somewhere that requires a boat, you can go that yeah. way. Um, one of the things they actually do, which is really nice, they have lots of farmers markets and stuff in yeah. Port Jefferson too. Um, there's definitely lots of restaurants. Um, New York City, hello. Yeah. We have a train station right on campus. You take that right into the city and you're there. And then yeah. there's also out east if you want to take a drive. Yeah, and the I nice mean, thing about Long Island is that if you drive 20 minutes in any direction, you come to a beach somewhere yeah. or a body of water. So if you drive north, then you're in the Long Island Sound. Right. Um, but there's there's definitely a lot of things to do. Um, mm -hmm. There's nice little vineyards and things out yeah. east. Um, there's lots of activities. And Stony Brook has buses that go. Yeah. To certain places. Yeah. If you're not yeah. if you're not like a fan of the train, we do have the seven bus mm -hmm. on campus. Yeah, which will take you to the city. I don't know exactly what the stops are. There's buses the stops for the Queens. mall. Yeah. If you don't, you're not gonna have a car when you come here. If you mm -hmm. dorm here, the buses for the mall. They'll take you to Target too. So get your and Target, side. which is right by Best Buy too. Yeah. In Port Jeff, they actually do this cute little thing in the fall called the Dragon Boat Festival, and people mm -hmm. like build these boats and they sell them off into the water, so that's really nice. Um, and there's so much history down in Port Jeff too. 
um, especially because it was like a port, not city, but port yeah. area for a long time. So people bring their kids. It's nice. Even on Long Island, it's so nice. When you're just going off campus or even on campus, it's almost woodsy and there's trees blossoming, everything going on. You know, it's it's, it's nice scenery almost. Yeah. I'd say. Our class is really big. It depends on they the class can you take. Be. They can be, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's been big lectures. I've had big lecture hall, say 300 students, and it's like, whoa, it's crazy. But I would say you definitely meet a diverse group of people. There's so many people coming from different majors to take this one class. And then there's your small classes like journalism. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll take one class and we're all we're all on the same page. We're all doing one thing, and you get to know them a little bit closer than you would in a big class. But you definitely meet different people from those big classes. Yeah, I mean, my Spanish class is six people, yeah. so that's like it's easy for me because because of journalism because like our mm -hmm. department is so small and tight knit anyway. But I know for the other people coming into Spanish, there's only six people in the class, and then you know they're forced to talk. It's like a little nerve wracking, mm -hmm. but it's really nice because then you really get that hands on um, learning experience from your professors too. Um, yeah. And plus, when it's six people, it's easier to negotiate deadlines. So. <laughs> How do you prioritize your time? Mm. It's uh, it's always changing. Definitely you know, sometimes there are things. You know, I think one of the biggest things that I had to realize was that I can't be perfect. I can't yeah. please everyone. I can't do all the things I need to do as I want to do them. But I definitely always put school put school first, uh, just because you know I am out of state, so my tuition is a little bit higher. Um, but that's what I really came here to do. I came here to learn. So. I usually put school first, but if it's something that I'm really going to learn from, if it's something that's really going to benefit me in the future, that it usually takes priority. Yeah, I mean, for me, as far as time management, I always set aside maybe I'll do a little bit more for this because it's a bigger thing than for something else. Or, you know, I know I have this due, so I'll do something else. It's, it's really about your schedule and keeping up with what you have to do. Yeah. And sometimes things just always kind of fall into place. Yeah. So. You'll figure it. You'll figure it out. Talk about news literacy. News literacy. News literacy <laughs> solidified my uh, my confidence in the journalism school. So yeah. I took news literacy my first semester, freshman year. It was the first my first ever college class, and I took it. It was with, one of mine too. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it was with um, Dean Miller, who was the former director of the news literacy program. So I was in his lecture. And then his recitation, which was like a smaller class, a different day, um, where you get to, where you get more hands-on experience. And he, I don't know what he saw, but he saw something in me, and that I was a journalism major in this class of bio majors, yeah. um, and really just took the time to nurture me and teach me, um, and really give me examples and guide me. So news literacy was really interesting because we had never looked at the news that way before through a journalistic perspective. We kind of just yeah. looked at it as news consumers. Um, and so you really learn to understand what is a trustworthy source, where is the context. Mm -hmm. um, Verification process, yeah. all that stuff. And it's not, Newslet is not just for journalism majors. It I mean, really, yeah. There's a wide, all different majors take this class and it's just for your own knowledge to learn about news and really see, really be aware. Yeah, and if so. you're not a journalism major and you're taking Newslet as an SBC requirement, it's really helpful because it helps you look at what you do from a different lens. Yeah. Um, and it's also a nice break. I know a lot of people, their first semester, if they're like a heavy science major, um, you are always studying, you're always, you know, doing something, you're always, you always have problems to hand in. But for Newslet, it's kind of nice to just sit back and like watch the news and like really absorb the information about the world around you. And we know lots of people who were originally science majors took newslet, changed their life, and they're like, okay, yeah. journalism. <laughs> <laughs> what sorts of equipment do you use? Uh, I mean, we have we've been starting new. We've been starting to use GoPros because that's Ooh. really big in journalism. So GoPros, you know, you see it all over different footage. But I mean, for using it for news is a whole new experience. Um, we use we've got uh, JVC cameras. We've got Nikon's. We've got um, a bunch of tripods for different certain things, mics, stick mics, lavalier mics, you know. As far as in the studio, we have green screens, we have the desk, we have the we have the whole pr uh, production studio, so. Yeah, what's actually, what's actually really interesting for us is that we, the Stony Brook School of Journalism has a deal with Nikon, um, and so every year we, 
more or less renew that deal. And so the cameras that we get are D seventy D seven thousands or above, D7100. which are yeah, which are evolving, which are the entry level cameras for for mm -hmm. professional photography, which is really nice because once you go into a professional newsroom and they hand you a camera, if you can use a 7100 70, or a 7000, whatever, yeah. you can use whatever camera they hand you. Um, and what's actually really interesting about our studio is that Marcy McGinnis, who was our former and founding associate dean of our journalism school and who was also with CBS News, um, they brought that anchor desk from CBS News. Yeah. And so they assembled it here. So it, it's, there's a lot of history there, too. <laughs> so it's really exciting to know that either Dan Rather or somebody else, you know, sat behind that desk where you're sitting now. Right. And even as far as equipment wise, you know, you're using Nikon, say, for certain content for the web. They're teaching you, you know, we want to use this kind of footage for the web because it's, it's, it's richer, it's blah, blah, blah. And then you have certain broadcast cameras that you would use in every day if you were a reporter for a news organization. So. The equipment bear, like differentiates between what you want to do, yeah. and you get experience of yeah. a little taste of each almost. All of our equipment is what they use in standard newsrooms, right. so it's really nice because when you go out into a professional newsroom, you're familiar with everything, you know how to do everything already. As far as in here in the newsroom, we do have Macs that are updated about every five years or so. Uh, we edit all of our video in Final Cut Pro. Uh, we use Adobe Photoshop, uh, Adobe Bridge, After all, Effects, uh, yeah. Yeah, After Effects, Adobe Audition to edit audio. Um, so it's really nice because you have all these tools in your toolbox, and when you go out there, people are really impressed by the wide variety of things that you know how to use and how to do. Advice for incoming students: Just take it in. Don't don't worry. You know, if I if somebody had told me that uh, as an incoming freshman, as like the very nervous type A person that I was, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have listened anyway. So like, it's fine if you do it. I like I don't mind, but. Um, there's so much about Stony Brook that you will learn and then you just have to absorb and you just have to be open to all of it. Yeah. You know, if you close I, yourself off, there's you're going to miss something. I definitely say don't let it consume you. Enjoy it. You know, you're coming here to get the college experience, but you're going to have all these new types of classes that you're not used to. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be a hard balance, but definitely enjoy it and and just don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, it's, it's all for your benefit. Yeah. You know, it always gets better. Um, even if you're kind of in a low or in like a slump, you know, it always picks back up. And then, you know, especially for us in the journalism program, like doing your package, writing your story, shooting your video, whatever it is, is like really hard and you're like it's really stressful. And then you see it, or and then you read it again and you see it published and like it was worth it. Yeah. So, or somebody compliments you on it, or you get like a nasty comment because that's the best part. You know, <laughs> whatever it is, seeing the feedback or seeing giving having people or your professors tell you that you did a good job is like, is worth it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all right, that's so about all the time that we have. So this was really, really, really exciting for us. Um, we hope that if you have any other questions, you will reach out to the admissions office. Um, if you want to reach out to Greg and I, you can follow us on Twitter. I am G-P-C-A-N-N-E-L-L-A -L -L um, on Twitter. And if you guys have any questions, just tweet us. Yeah, mine is H-T-A-M-E-E-Z, H to me. Uh, so we're pretty easy to find. We're yeah. always around. But uh, good luck. We good hope luck. To see, we hope to see you in the fall. Or actually, we're graduating. But we hope somebody here will see you in the fall. <laughs> good luck, future Seawolves. <laughs>